We're making brushes together with Joshua and Illustrator lately, and I figured we could share some tips to help everyone improve their own brushes. I recorded this to help them get up to speed with Krita 4. These are some of the techniques we use to create natural media brushes. I invite you to create your own brushes, and if you want professionally built ones, you can find some for free on GitHub, and we also have our premium set on Gumroad. Krita 4 comes with a new mask brush feature that allows us to create much more complex brushes with the Pixel Brush Engine. Since Krita 4, the engine is also a lot faster as it now uses all of your CPU cores, so you can also put a few more details in, add some texture. So we are first going to look at how to randomize the main stroke from your brush. We're going to use the Rotate, Scatter, Ratio, Mirror parameters, I'm going to focus on what's essential, and then we're going to look at the mask brushes feature, and I'll show you how to work with the multiply and color dodge blending modes in particular. These are the real techniques we use to produce professional grade brushes with Krita. That said, let's get started. Let's look at the parameters that allow us to randomize a brush, a bit like this one starting from a shape that tends to generate very digital and artificial looking patterns. So I'll start from a basic brush preset and deactivate the size parameter so that we have a super simple, very digital brush. You don't need too many parameters to randomize a brush that has to feel digital, but as soon as you want natural textures, you have to play mainly with the rotation, scatter, ratio, and a few other parameters to break it up a little bit and make it feel more organic. So if we pick a shape, let's say this one, I'm going to set the spacing to auto so that the spacing scales up and down with the brush size. That's what this parameter does, and I'm going to make it a little larger so that the pattern is really obvious. Now the size is way too big by default. Okay, so when I'm painting, you can see a clear pattern because a brush is a repetition of the same image and by default, the image is always orientated the same way. So to break up this pattern, the first parameter to look at is rotation. So when we activate the rotation, it's going to change the angle of the pattern based currently on our pressure. So you have the parameters you can activate or deactivate on the left. And then when you activate one, you have a series of sensors that change how this parameter is, uh, like the values Krita will generate for this parameter. So by default, pen pressure is on and it maps currently, well, on the rotation, minus 180 degree to 180 degree, and we can multiply it by its by the strength value to reduce the range. So for example, if you reduce the strength to 10%, it's going to go from minus 18 degree to positive 18 degrees. So it's going to use a very small range. That's what the top slider does in general. But for the rotation, if you want to make it feel very natural, you can use the fuzzy option. Fuzzy generate random numbers, stroke will generate a new number for each of the strokes, and dab will generate a new random angle for each of the dabs. So the dabs are these, it's one picture being painted on the canvas. I'm going to activate Fuzzy Dab and deactivate pressure. And now, already, my brush gets drawn at completely random angles. So. Now it feels a little more natural. Obviously it works better for a rocky texture at the moment. We'll see how we can get more control over our brush stroke later. But one thing I want to show you is by default, this curve we have here, which means give me a random value between minus 180 and positive 180 degrees. So just give me a random angle is shared across all settings, meaning that if you add another parameter inside of that and you modify the curve, for example, say I want say I want to control the drawing angle, the rotation of my brush with the drawing angle. It looks something like that. The pattern is going to follow my brush stroke. If I add fuzzy dab, 
you'll see that uh, the fuzziness of it is too much. I get back to that previous result where it's completely random. So I want to reduce the range here. I'll get, it's hard to see with this one, but it doesn't really follow the brush stroke anymore. So the problem is because share curve across all settings is checked, it modified the curve for both settings at the same time. So you can uncheck that and reset the drawing angle. It will be different from the fuzzy dab. Now, the way you calculate curves together will affect the values that you get, the values that are generated, and the randomness from the brush. So if you hover the curves calculation mode, you get a tooltip that gives you a few examples. Addition will add the two curves, so it means it will add an extra offset to the angle using the fuzzy dab sensor on top of the drawing angle meaning it will draw along the curve and then you will have extra fuzziness, extra randomness in the rotation. So now as the brush spacing is pretty high, you can see gaps and because the texture has a lot of granularity itself, you can see the little dot being repeated, although the pattern breaks up already. But if you lower the spacing, you will start to see the stroke come a little closer and then it looks a little more like, well, tracks in that case, but if we filter the stroke a little bit, it can look a little more natural like ink. I'm going to keep the spacing higher as we are working. We're going to look at scatter. So scatter is going to scatter the dabs along both axes by default, X and Y. X is along the stroke and Y is perpendicular to the stroke. So the strength is the distance in your spacing unit. So it's um, five is, is really high, like it's, I don't know if that's the spacing units exactly, but let's say you have 10 pixels between dabs. I think that five means 50 pixels randomly in both axes. So you want to lower that and by default it's not random it's assigned to your pressure so the more you press the more scattered your brush strokes will get the strength value again it controls the maximum value you can get from the curves you use it to really set the maximum you can see it very clearly on the preview as i lower the amount the maximum spacing i get from scatter gets goes down i'm going to check fuzzy dab and uh, remove the pressure so that on every dab, I get that random offset, completely random offset, because the curve co goes from zero to 100% or zero to one, it's going to use the full range from my strength. So if I increase the strength, I get a lot of scatter all the time. If I lower the strength, I get a low maximum. Now, as I said, the y-axis is perpendicular to the stroke meaning it's going to break up the stroke. As you can see, it's going to add splats on, um, if I'm drawing vertically, it's going to add splats, offset them left and right. And if I uncheck it, it only scatters along the stroke, so it changes the density of the ink. That's really useful at times. If you want to have a brush that creates kind of splats or little happy accidents, you can use the X axis scattering. And as you can see, it adds some extra variety to the stroke. So again, you want to play with a fairly large spacing at first to really see how the sensors and parameters affect your brush. But as you lower the spacing, you'll start to see more breaking up in the pattern. You can see these gaps appear in some places while you have a lot more density in other places. For inking presets, this can be useful. And finally, we have the ratio. So to see the ratio a little better, I'm going to deactivate scatter only because if you deactivate rotation, it can look a little ugly. The ratio, it squashes the brush depending on the sensors that you use. By default, it's using the pressure. Again, we're going to use fuzzy dab here. And if you leave fuzzy dab fully like that, it tends to break up the stroke, but it's not going to be as obvious as scatter. And it won't have that problem that X and Y, both axes are tied together. So if you want to increase the scatter on the X axis, it's also going to increase on the Y axis and you won't have a consistent stroke anymore. So often to create an inking preset, you'll want to use the X axis only with a small amount of scatter, obviously. And for the ratio, you'll want to make it so the curve doesn't start too low. 
So if I lower the strength, it's going to lower the maximum ratio value. So it's going to squash the brush, which is not great. Instead, we want to keep the strength maximum most of the time and to raise the minimum value to make it so the dabs don't squash too much. So ratio is good to add some subtlety after you worked on the rotation. And I would say sometimes after you worked on the scatter, scatter and ratio are, are similar in that they can add some subtlety, some extra subtlety to the stroke at a very small cost because you're not drawing extra dabs when you work with that. And the biggest factor for performances when it comes to brushes is your brush dabs, the amount that you draw. So that's controlled by the spacing value. And obviously the size is another very big factor. So the larger your brush, the more performance intensive it will be. There's one more parameter you can use to break up your brush at a basic level. I'll deactivate everything for this one. It's the mirror. Mirror is going to randomly mirror your brush or mirror it based on a parameter, but really you don't want to use pressure for that. So you have to check that you want the brush to mirror horizontally and or vertically. It's going to mirror that texture. It's going to add some randomness to the stroke and you can use fuzzy dab or fuzzy stroke here. So fuzzy dab is going to randomly mirror your brush, you know, on one or both axes or none of these. It can also keep the brush dab intact. This one, you can see that alone, it adds some variety to the brush, but you still get that pattern because you only have four options, mirrored on the x-axis, mirrored on the y-axis, not mirrored, or mirrored on both axes. Four combinations are not a lot, but if I add the rotation back to it, it breaks up my texture even more and adds even more variety to the brush. Sometimes mirror is nice, like if you have foliage, for example, it depends on the type of texture you use, but as your brush gets more spaced out. For example, for my uh, waves down there in the brushes, I'm using the mirror to add some variety to the texture without having to create extra textures, which you can also do. You can have a brush with multiple textures that Krita will pick randomly from every time you paint a dab. Yeah, there are a few that do this, like the, the pencil, for example. There are a few animated brushes by default. With that, I'm going to leave the rotation and scatter on to get that broken up brush. And we're going to move down straight to the mask brush feature. This came in Krita 4, and it's very important to add variety to your brush. So the way it works is Krita is going to draw another brush stroke on top of the first one using another brush tip, and it's going to use it as a mask for the first one using a blending mode of your choice. So first you have to activate the brush tip option. This brush generated for me is a very small circle that multiplies my first stroke. My first stroke is only going to show inside of that small circle. If I increase the diameter of the brush, you'll see that it shows more or less of my stroke. Using the basic round brush with a little bit of fade, you can fade out like around the edges of the brush and let some of the texture show, but filter some of it out. So this can be good to add some texture to an inking brush. Now, one problem is it has opacity and flow active by default. So I'm going to deactivate opacity. So our brush is a little more crisp. There's not a lot of breaking up inside of the first brush. So I'll increase the size of the second one. The first brush is 56 pixels. And now the second one, the more I increase the size towards that those 56 pixels, the more I show of the brush's edges. And I can use the fade. If I increase it so I make the circle sharper, it's going to show more of the edges. And as I lower the fade, you can see it smooths out the transition. You can also then like increase the sharpness, but lower the diameter to get sharper edges and get some kind of charcoal, like round charcoal brush. Or if we change the shape from a circle to a square, you will get something that feels a lot more like charcoal. So mask brush is a very important feature to create natural media brushes. This tool draws a second brush stroke on top of the first one. So it's going to not just divide the performances by two, but the larger you make the second brush and the more you lower its spacing, the more resource intensive it will become. 
So you have a precision system as well. When you lower it, it increases the performances a little bit. But performances come last. First, you want to work on the brush's look. You want to optimize the performances once you have finished the brush design. You mainly optimize the performances by increasing the spacing and cheating by using a different brush tip that gives you a similar result to what you have but that's going to use fewer dabs to achieve that. We can use any brush tip in these brushes. So the, the sharper your brush tip, especially in multiply mode, the sharper your final brush will look. This one may not achieve a lot. Breaks the brush a little bit at the start and at the end. I think if we play with the size, for example, it may give us more interesting results and playing with the Low. We're going to lower the maximum and we're going to get these strokes in the middle of the brush as well. You can get that uh, bristly effect with a brush that has dots with some space in between. As you can see in a creamier brush as well as you lower the brush's flow. Again, that's working with the multiply blending mode. In the areas that are black on what this brush stroke draws, it's going to show your initial brush tip through. You can see how when I activate and deactivate the brush tip in the preview, activating the brush tip filters or only shows what's inside that new brush stroke on the preview. Then you can use different blending modes. Color dodge I really like because it tends to push the first stroke. It's a little confusing as using color dodge here, it's like adding white in a color dodge on a painting. It's going to boost it and sharpen it a lot. And because we are working with an alpha channel and not with color directly, you can imagine that when you use color dodge on a painting, it's going to boost the colors and the contrast. But if you were to use it on an alpha channel, it actually increases the contrast versus the sharpness of the alpha channel. So it reduces the transparency. And that's what we can see here. It tends to remove soft transitions from the brush. You see it very clearly on the end of the brush here, how it tends to aggregate the stroke and to only leave the edges broken up. And the advantage of using color dodge is that you can really play with the various brush tips that you have at your disposal to create a wide range of effects. If I increase the flow back and increase the minimum flow as well, it can create extremely sharp, like again, charcoal or inking brushes, very hard ink. If I just change the starting brush tip, you'll see that I can achieve very convincing results. Sometimes by lowering the spacing, I just need to play a bit with the minimum size. And I think we can get slightly broken brush, but it starts to feel like ink. So I use the color dodge mode a lot to achieve inky effects, like very sharp ink with a brush on the canvas. And you can play with the rotation, the scatter, the ratio, and the mirror, the exact same parameters we saw at the top to add variety to the second brush stroke. So at the moment, you have no way to preview just the mask brush separately from the main brush, which could be useful at times. You'll have to play with the preview as you change any parameter or setting. You're going to see your brush update in real time at the top, and you should work a lot with that. But in general, think that Multiply has a tendency to soften your brush and to reduce its size, while Color Dodge tends to push towards the first stroke's edges, the outer bounds, and Subtract will remove some of the brush in the middle so you can use it to achieve watercolor or watery edges effects like these. I hope you like the tutorial. Don't forget to subscribe, to share it. It's very important. We need your help to make more tutorials. Also, please tell me, would you like tutorials on how to create Python plugins with Krita? I'm looking to refocus on the program, create some tools, and I'd be glad to share some of the things I learned along the way with you. So please tell me in the comments below. That said, thank you Gangly for watching. Be creative, have fun, and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.